The glorious summer is upon us and it's just in time for the Lido at the Royal Mile to be completed. Being able to take a dip or a dive is the perfect complement to all of the other rides and attractions that you will find here. And trust me, watching ladies taking a dip is certainly the attraction. Dude, it's 2023. You can't say that anymore. Oh yeah, you guys, welcome back to 1930. We are getting close to starting to pull the park together into the future years, but before we do, we need to develop the rest of the park. So, this is where we were last week. We did the ballroom. There's the ballroom. Uh, we walked along this way and we did the tennis courts. And of course, we did our foresty type area. Yes. Guys, it still looks so good. I just loaded this park for the first time and I'm loving how this looks. This is where we're turning our attention then this week. So, we need to complete the light. We need to complete the uh, the train station that we've got going on here. I need to put something in here. I did originally say it was going to be tennis courts, but I've actually got an idea that I think I want to pull off. Now, we need to talk about this elephant in the room, this little ride right here before we do anything, because it's 1930. Sorry, Gus, you were designed in 1960. I know I said I wasn't going to be precious with dates, but that's kind of playing it a little bit too fast and loose with the rules. So what we are going to do instead is have uh, this bad boy. So everything in the park so far has been all around uh, like Ferris wheels and carousels and stuff. And this bad boy would have existed in the 1930s, in fact, pre-1930 and would have been the top thrill ride. So let's swap it out. Uh, and let's do our thing. Okay, so this is what we're working on this week. You know what time it is. It's a load of video with some music telling a story. See you in a minute. Guys, why is it the first part of every single episode always seems like it's the most underwhelming? But there's a day and a half's worth of work that's gone into this. Like, oh, but it doesn't matter. All of the critical infrastructure that I want in place is now in place. The paths are all in the right place. The stuff is starting to come together. And yes, I put the tennis courts in because the next episode we need to put a roller coaster in. So it's going to be torn out anyway. And actually, this area has a story to it for later on when uh, we've kitted it out and whatever. So it's just a carbon copy of the tennis courts the other side of the way, but it's it's there for now. But this is where most of the work has happened. It's inside the Lido. And this idea of bringing the Art Deco 1930s stuff to the park is really starting to bear fruit now. And I mean, this building here, it's very raw and that's the whole idea. This would probably be some kind of pebble dash, uh, like rendering and whatever, but actually I wanted this to be rough concrete. So yeah, I'm like, I'm loving how this is turning out. This is feeling like a proper Lido now. Um, what I've done here is I've put the windows in, but I think I might need to make these higher because the idea is you're not supposed to be able to peer into the windows, right? And right now they are right in eye line. <laughs> so I should probably fix that. But inside I've put all of the stalls in that you would normally find. And I've also just put some benches. I will be uh, decorating inside here. This needs tiles and stuff uh, going on, but of course I need to come around and, and do all of that later on. The outside won't never necessarily be decorated much more than this but the inside of course will be uh, will be decorated then if i wanted this to make i wanted this to be like 
actually functional. So I've just put in some food units and stuff in here. So and then paths underneath. So it actually all works. And then over here, I've built this monstrosity. So again, everything is all really like almost brutalist. It's, it's pre-brutalist, if you like. This is the idea of using concrete to build everything because it's... <laughs> because it's fun. Uh, so here we go, we've got some dive uh, diving boards. I do just need to extend these bottom ones, by the way. Please don't try and dive off these at the moment. You are going to get hurt. <laughs> but yeah, this is just the idea of the diving boards. Lots of concrete. I've actually used um, peep-sized stairs for this one, so that's why that's like it is. Uh, but yeah, I quite like how this is. This is just randomly pulled together. I'm all right with it. And uh, then we've got the slide as well. All Lidos have got a slide. Of course, it, of course they do, right? So... It's all good. <laughs> and then in this area, I have just started to pull together what it's going to look like. So you saw me reconfiguring where everything was to make it all fit in. This is going to be like a splash pool. So Golden Acre had exactly that, although in Golden Acres, it was actually down here. Uh, but I wanted this outside the Lido. It felt like that would uh, that would fit best. I've added in some extra shops here just to give it a bit of extra capacity and then moved around the rides and the toilets and stuff. The one thing I did add was this. <gasps> Yeah, Golden Acre had go-karts, not in the format that we know go-karts today. And this is the closest I'm going to be able to get to having 1930s. This is the Munsters go-kart set. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it quite fits, but we're going to run with it anyway. This wouldn't necessarily be tarmac, by the way. Uh, in the next update, I am going to go ahead and uh, replace this with wood. It would be a wood track, not a tarmac track. Uh, so like I say, it's go-karts, but not in the way that we recognise. And there's some things I just can't hide. Can't hide the lights and stuff, but I'll be able to do something with it to make it look uh, to make it look oldy, worldy. So this is oh, what the last thing to do is the bridge over here. I've started to um, get the railway bridge to actually feel like it should be. So I've put all of the concrete pillars roughly where I think they should be. And then of course, this is just gonna come across this way. Uh, but of course you need the concrete pillars because it's on the curve and it needs to be able to support its own weight. And then all I'll do then is just copy that across to the path. So that's, uh, yeah, that's looking like that. So this is where it's at at the moment. I reckon we need more video, please. <laughs>
you guys there is so much to unpack in that one like it's starting to come together as a scenario and it feels like it's living inside the real world but of course it's not quite done i need to do all of the final touches and stuff so let's unpack everything that you have just seen we'll start down here in the lido lots of touching up work going on you know lots of things making it feel right and of course i decided to put stairs in here because it felt like that was the thing to do and then it needed some kind of railing at the top here to stop people from falling off from the top bit i mean it's 1930 health and safety doesn't exist in the format that we know now but it does still exist in some capacity <laughs> like it's all good uh, and then over here the diving board, I have just extended the diving boards out slightly and extended the railings and stuff. And I'm happy with this, how this has turned out. This is just such a concrete mess. It's a blob and I love it. Like, I'm so here for it. It's, it's so good. And then I've just put the bunting across the pool here. So this is like where you would show guests or swimmers that there's a depth change. So this is the start of the decline and then this is the deepest point, right? So you'd probably have depth signs and stuff here which we don't have in planet coaster so i don't know whether i'm going to be able to replicate that or not but uh yeah that, that's a, that's an actual thing uh, and then i've just done all of the shack stuff here so i don't want them to be any more than this I'll, I'll probably do some like fine touches and stuff just to bring it to life a little bit but i don't want it to be any more than this but inside the changing rooms these now are kitted out as i want them so the blue walls the tiles on the wall and on the floor, the green tile, oh, it just looks so 1930s now. Like, this is exactly as it would have looked. Jank and horrible and gross. <laughs> what I haven't done is the bit in here yet. I've got a couple of ideas. I just need to play that uh, play that through as part of the final touches when I put the roof and stuff on. But, of course, the other changing rooms are exactly the same. So, you'd have male one side, female the other. So, uh, yeah, that's all good. Over here... I've just put in a garden, so I know I wanted this to be a splash pool, it is still a splash pool, you can still get to it by, by way of this path here, uh, but actually I wanted it to be a bit more of a gardened pool, because otherwise people are going to be falling in, <laughs> so control the entrance and exit point to this pool, uh, so that's what I've done, is a couple of raised uh, raised flower beds, and you can see that see that here, and then a couple of raised fountains, you just need to put like fountain effects and stuff in here just to make it make it come to life a little bit, but yeah. I'm loving, I'm loving how this is turning out so far. And when all of the pathing and stuff goes down and it makes it all flush, uh, it's going to look, uh, it's going to look pretty, pretty awesome. And then over here with the station, it's exactly the same station design that we've got for the rest of the park. It would be, it's a consistent design. Uh, so I've just put all the railway fences and stuff up along here. Just need to do all the train work and the foliage and stuff. Uh, and then we're good to go. So yeah, that's all cool. Uh, we've got the uh, planters and stuff that were coming uh, along here. Uh, was the pebble in on the last one? I don't think the pebbles were, right? So what I've done here is I've decided that I'm going to have the, the actual pavement down here, uh, but then it's going to move into pebbles because this isn't actually a concrete pad or anything that this ride is sitting on, but they have just made it a kind of a solid surface by way of pebbling it. Uh, so I'm just using the same technique from yes, uh, last week's episode. So uh, that's what we're going for. That's what we're going for here. Uh, I've just done some work along this side, right? So the real life Golden Acre has got a train tunnel or two uh, running along it, right? And it feels like that's exactly what this would have. And actually, this creates a couple of passing places for potential future roller coasters as well. Uh, so you're not actually interacting with the um, uh, interacting with the train with the train too much. Uh, talking of trains, I need to change that terrain. Uh, that needs fixing. And I'm gonna just put a retaining wall along here now. This this is in preparation for something that I want to do next week when we put the roller coaster in. So I need a retaining wall already in. So that's what I've done. Uh, that's what I've done here. And then moving back over to the go-karts. Uh, so the go-karts have now got a little bit more of a personality. I've swapped out the tarmac for wood. Uh, so yeah, this is like a 2000 piece building, but it works. It's needed. Uh, yeah, love it. And then this Art Deco style fence looks the place now. Like I chose the colours because I managed to find a colour photo from 1930. It was actually a colour film from 1930 from golden acre and this is the sort of design that they uh, that they would have had uh, so yeah liking that and then all along the middle of this bit here uh, would be all of like the maintenance sheds and where they keep all of their spare parts and stuff uh, i can't do much more than this of course because the go-karts in game dictate how big they are these would be way smaller in real life and they'd be on like pitches and stuff you know this this um, curve would be on a pitch and whatever but you just can't do it in planet coaster so we're just going to deal with this it looks the part it looks good enough as it is i dig it and this chipboard on the wall on the as a wall here is just perfect it's yeah love it 
I'm here for it. Uh, then over with the Swift Drifters, uh, I have copied across the seating area design that we've got. It felt like that would be like a consistent architectural thing that they would have. So all I've done is I've taken that one design and I have expanded it into a much bigger design. So this is what we've uh, this is what we've got here. Just needs a roof, um, but of course it would have a wooden floor. And it would have all of these fences and stuff living alongside here and then of course i'll put the roof and stuff in and then it will match the existing uh, the existing design that we've uh, that we've got so yes at the back here uh, i've just put in some kind of topiary maze uh like arches if you like again i think the real life counterpart golden acre actually had this too so I wanted to copy that across because it felt like that's uh, something that was needed. Uh, and then this building, <laughs> half finished building, uh, is exactly as I wanted this to be. So I live in a, <laughs> just to dox myself, I live in a, in a settlement that was growing up through the Victorian times. And there's a lot of Victorian buildings that are still around. And of course, I know that 1930, we're actually in the House of Windsor, not Victorian times, but architecture would still be the same so this would be one of those buildings so i'm going for that style so when i finish this off this pitched roof will be of, of course right the way across this will be a bit of a flat roof and there would be something along the top here just to give it a bit of personality so can't wait to uh, i can't wait to get that uh, to get that all finished over by the bridge um as we come this way the bridges are now done uh, or as much as i want them to be done this was what took the most time actually uh, getting them all together so i decided not to use the uh, the suspension bridge style wood beams for this one because they just didn't fit it felt like it was on a curve this would be this would be sufficient right and then you just have the uh, the concrete pillars every now and again just to support the weight of the train. But the footpath doesn't need the same supporting because it doesn't carry as much weight. It just carries people. Uh, so it's a similar design. I've used the same uh, the same design here, uh, but just without the concrete pillars and without the, the oomph behind it. And then, of course, the wood effect here is the same wood effect that I've taken from the bridge over here because i wanted it to uh, i wanted it to feel consistent and then <laughs> this oh we'll just have to do with this so the real life counterpart in 1930 just had a had a sheer brick wall right across um, and it just had a couple of places where water and stuff could escape through but actually i decided not to do that i wanted it to feel a bit more open <sighs> we're taught we're, we're tied to what the game is going to offer us here so it is what it is. This is the this is the solution. The oh my god, this is the solution that I've come up with. So this is the solution that I'm going to stick with. And then along the outside, you saw me putting in the rest of the terrain. Uh, I wanted there to be like a country road running through this way. You saw me put down the mud road, and then you saw me change my mind pretty quickly. <laughs> so it's actually back to tarmac road. But this is like a an external road that's going to give you a bit of a not a challenge as such, but it will give you something to play with when you um. Uh, when you're doing the scenario and then of course I've just started this idea of farmland around the outside and scrubbery I'm not going to do any more kitting out than this I'll throw a couple of trees down and call it done because you guys are just going to come along and build on it anyway so it just needs to represent farmland it doesn't need to be anything surreal uh, or anything like too realistic and then of course the forest stuff is going to continue down this way so that's what I need to do uh, talking of needing to do stuff that's what I'm going to go and do see you in a minute
All right, then, you guys, let's do this one last time. Welcome to 1930. Welcome to the Royal Mile. And, guys, this is everything I wanted the scenario to be. I don't want it to be any more than this. And did you think it was going to look like this three weeks ago when you just saw the boxes on the floor? No, me neither. <laughs> I'm so chuffed with how this has turned out. It looks amazing. This is going to be such a fun park to develop over the years. I am so excited. And yes, I'll throw it on the workshop so you guys can have a play with it. I'm going to open a competition and stuff, so stay tuned for that. But this is where we've been focusing our attention this episode, of course. This, uh, this little development here. Now, the law of this area is, or in fact, the law of Golden Acre, is that it wanted to be a Coney Island of the UK, right? So it stands to reason that this would be the area that they're trying to replicate that. So this is the area where some effort and money and time would have been spent. Hence the reason why the Lido is here. So the Lidos, Lidos are expensive to build, by the way. It's expensive to build and expensive to maintain. And this is looking so good. I put some sun lounges in. I did some research on what was in the Blue Lagoon. Um... Lido at Golden Acre when it was around and they had they had sun lounges in this color so yes that that'll do <laughs> they also had tables and chairs they had marble tables and these sun lounger style chairs so even though these are like modern in-game ones they're actually it's it's realistic they also had sofas would you believe sofas in 1930 <laughs> anyway I've done some more stuff around the pool uh, of course over the years Technology would have changed and you'd put like underwater lighting and all of that sort of stuff coming in. So watch this space for the future inside here. Then uh, this is what I have done. Ta -da -da. So nothing overly special going on in here. Uh, I realized that <laughs> I hadn't put the oh, hello. That was quite creepy. Uh, I hadn't put the windows inside uh <laughs> inside so it didn't look right so i had to do some tweaking and whatever but this is everything i wanted this to be uh, in here i mean my original idea that i was telling you about didn't work out but it's okay i'm all right with that and then the changing rooms yes i love these perched open windows they're so cool they're so funky love it love it love it love it and of course you've got the changing uh, the changing rooms and and stuff that are all in here we come back outside, and then we're outside the Blue Lagoon. So there's the sign. Uh, Spike, I'm really sorry. I butchered your sign again. <laughs> I, I did make a promise I was going to use it properly. I will. When we start doing the coasters and stuff, I promise I will eventually use your sign properly. Uh, but this is the... Um, the splash pad that I wanted. So I wanted to make it obvious that it was a splash pad. That's why there's the slide that I've copied in. And there is water in here, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you spotted it. Uh, it's not very deep. But that's because that's the in-game stuff. I couldn't really make it any deeper than that. But let's just pretend for, you know, now that it's actually up and stuff. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, it's a splash pad and it's got all the flowers and stuff around it. I did want to use uh, the TMTK grass that's available, but... Uh, I think it's Banner's grass, uh, but it, this felt so much better. Um, I'm going to use Banner's grass elsewhere, but I wanted this to be like a specific colour, and that's th this specific colour. So, yes, I love how this has turned out. Like, ah. Oh. It's just this central focal point feature now, and I love it. Uh, so the go-karts then, a bit of touching up, a bit of clutter around. I finished off the roof and, and just made like the, the um, maintenance shed and stuff actually makes sense. And it's now looking decent. Uh, of course, we've got lots of foliage and stuff going around the outside. So just bringing it all to life, you know, you, you know the drill, right? Foliage brings everything to life. <laughs> that is the rule. Uh, and then we've got... The train station. So the train station is now finished. It out. It looks out to the meadow. Um, don't want the meadow to be any more than that because it's going to be developed over time. That's where the theme park is going to sit for the future. But yeah, this is looking so different to everything else. And that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, then you've got the toilets. Well, the, we know the toilets. They're the same as all of the other ones that we've got elsewhere. And then we've got the Blue Lagoon Cafe. Yes. It's turned out really well, guys. Like... Yes, I like it. I quite like the um, I quite like this rounded uh, this rounded wall. It's it's looking pretty cool inside here. I haven't done much, right? I kind of figured you guys would want to have a bit of a blank canvas to work with something. Uh, so yeah, this space isn't really that big. You can't really do much with it in way of decoration and tables and chairs and stuff. So I've just left it empty, but I've tidied it up. So it's at least clean, and you can, guys can come in and you can do your own. Uh, you can do your own thing with it, of course. Uh, and then over here we've got the Swift Drifters. 
None of the rides got names, by the way, and they wouldn't have names. Uh, they would just be there, and they would just exist. Uh, so the Swift Drifters, this has been tidied up, and this is what I meant by having the um, uh, having the same building style as the seating areas. It just makes it consistent. It feels right. It feels like it's it's there. And of course, it gets a pretty decent queue because this is the thrill ride of 1930. This is like the the big addition. This is the biggie. Of course, 1933 is gonna be even bigger. So I've um, copied across the uh, forest. I say copied across. I've put the forest uh, right back here. I didn't want to go any further because I started to really drag the game down. I think I've used something like 10,500 trees or something because you've sink some of them in to make shrubbery and whatever. It's a bit overkill. So <laughs> I sort of thought I need to stop. And anyway... When we get to, uh, I need to check the dates of the Depression, actually, the Great Depression. But when we get to, like, the mid to late 30s, there's going to be a coaster in here anyway. So, it'll get cleared. Uh, and it'll be all forgotten <laughs> there was ever a forest there. Uh, and then what I've done on the outside, I've just touched up all of the terrain. I've made it hillier. And I've put all the final stuff down uh, so that it's actually a bit of a challenge. This park is going to give you quite a challenge, actually, because you've got stuff that's already built. So you've either got to repurpose things um, or you've got to demolish it and start again. Uh, you've got lots of open land to give you some decent space. Uh, and then you've also got lots of hills. You've got forest to contend with. You've got water to contend with. If you're going for a modern style theme park, you're going to have to put your parking somewhere. So that's going to be on this little flat land and whatever. So this is actually going to be a pretty decent challenge if you're going to pick it up on the workshop and start playing with it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so let's just do a real quick recce of the entire park in case this is your first rodeo and it's the first time here. So this is the front entrance, all of the tickets and stuff. By the way, I've done a, uh, like a touching up pass. Uh, I, I walked past and touched everybody up. Uh, <laughs> so, because Chacho is creepy. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, this is the ticket entrance area, and this is the view over the lake. Do you remember that view we said we were going to get? Well, there it is. That's the view that you get. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so you've got the Royal Mile uh, Cafe that's up the top here. And then you've got the slight backstage area and stuff over this side. You've got the terrace of the balcony. Then you've got the train station that's living uh, that's living here. And we come through to the, uh, the ballroom. So here is the ballroom in all of its 1930s glory. And then you've got the tennis courts. Uh, and then you come through this way. And you have the Woodland Railway Station. Along with a couple of hidden rides and a couple of hidden shops and stuff. But yeah, look, Woodland is in the actual woods. Woohoo! <laughs> and then we have a central, uh, a central feature of the galleon and the boats and stuff that are around the outside. We walk around this way, over the bridge. This, by the way, was meant to be like a, a, a lagoon. It's been fed by a stream and stuff, uh, or like by a spring, and I was going to put it poking out, and this was going to be a waterfall and stuff. But when I tried it, it just cheapened it, so I didn't bother. I've just left it. Uh, I've left it as it is. And then, of course, we come over to the area that we already know. This is this week's. This is week. This week's area, and then this is another meadow. It's the extension of this part of the meadow. Um, of course, we're developing it in 1933, so I didn't want to do too much to it. But this is doesn't need to be any more than this. Uh, farmland in the background, and then of course the bridge coming through this way so there you go guys right from the top what do you reckon let me know in the comments please uh and of course it's competition time you are about to out chacho chacho you have until the 1st of july 2023 uh to create your best most realistic park the best ones will get showcased on the channel uh and i cannot wait to see them i don't care what time frame you you do it whether you stick to 1930 whether you bring it right up to date completely up to you i don't care uh the only thing i do ask is that the ballroom stays that's the only thing i i request the ballroom stays because it's listed anyway thank you so much for getting to the end of the video guys see you next week 1933 thank you so much bye <laughs>